Hi and welcome to this tutorial. I will show you how to create a habit tracker spreadsheet for free and how it is very easy to create this kind of digital product. This product is already available in our shop with even more features and the link is in the description box. Let me show you how I developed the main sections of this habit tracker with Google Sheets. It's a relatively simple spreadsheet to create with many checkboxes and I will show you step-by-step step how to create this exact product. The first step of this tutorial is to change the colors of the spreadsheet. So for this, we need to change the theme. The theme allows you to change the colors automatically for the entire spreadsheet with a single click. To do this, you must click on Format, then Theme, and then Customize. Then from this moment, you will be able to change the six main colors of this spreadsheet, which will define the, the overall theme. So you simply click on the accent one color, uh, the little dot, and then enter the X code or the RJB code of the color you, that you want. You can also use the color picker if necessary. So now that the six colors of the spreadsheet are defined, we will be able to click on done, then on the X at the top right to close the ribbon. We can now start creating our spreadsheet. The first thing that I like to do is often set a standard height for the rows and also set standard fonts and center everything. These are not necessarily essential steps, but I personally find them very important. Next, given that it is a file with a lot of checkboxes, it is good to separate our columns relatively narrowly to be able to have checkboxes close to each other. So I set the size of my columns to 32 pixels. When we create a new spreadsheet on Google Sheets, the number of columns is always limited to 26 uh, from A to Z. In our case, we are going to need a little bit more columns, so I'm going to add some right away. I added 75 new columns to make sure that I have enough space to work. Perfect. Now I am all set up to create my spreadsheet. So let's start with the title at the top left. So I need to merge several cells together and enter the title of our spreadsheet, which is in our case, a habit tracker. I do the same thing with the lines below to indicate the month. You can always change the formatting of the title, the colors and the grid lines. Our habit tracker is a monthly spreadsheet, so you must select a year and a month. So let's create a monthly selection possibility. Let's call this calendar settings with the ability to type in a year and select a month. For the month, you must create a drop-down menu with the 12 months of the year. Um, the months are therefore defined on the side of the spreadsheet, and then the top-down is defined. Let's add a little bit of colors and grid lines to have a more beautiful spreadsheet. Then we can easily create an area to define our habits per day and per week with 31 columns for the 31 days of each month, which is also the equivalent of four weeks and three days. Then we can define the days of the month. For the moment, let's just define them from one to 31. We will see later how to adjust a month from months with 30 days to months with uh, 31 days or 29 days like February. We can now define the structure of our habit table. Let's define 25 habits in this example. Then we can insert our checkboxes, which is the central element of this spreadsheet. On Google Sheets, checkboxes are really user friendly. So once added, they can easily be tick or unticked. Now let's change our dates. We know the month and the year, but also the day since it is the first day of the month. So I use the date formula and add the year as a parameter, then the month. The month must be a number, so the number three must be in the formula instead of March, for example. So I use the VLOOKUP formula to find the number three in the table at the top right. And finally, the number one, since it is the first day of the month. I just have to add the numbers so that the VLOOKUP formula returns the correct number. 
Finally, we can now change the date format to have only a number and not the full date. We therefore click on format, then number, custom date and time, and choose the display of a single number. The result seems to be the same, but in reality, it is March 1st, 2024, and not a simple digit number one. For the second, we could simply add one to the first and drag right to autopopulate the other days. If I change the month for February, for example, as you can see, days, day 30th and 31st become the first and the second, because in reality, it is the first and the second of March. But we don't want these dates to appear, so we have to add a condition if the month is different with the formula if. And now these days are blank. Now for a better visual, we can add exactly the same thing, but by displaying the first three letters of the day of the week by clicking on format, number, custom date and time and choosing days as abbreviation. Perfect. Let's shape this up a little bit with colors and grid lines. The gray grid line prevents us from seeing our spreadsheet clearly, so let's simply hide them by clicking on View, Show, and Grid Lines. In order to make our spreadsheet more realistic, I will add some examples and goals. I will now create a summary table on the right side with the number of habits completed and the number of habits left to do or to achieve our goals. The text will look better when tilted. For the number of habits completed, we simply want to count the number of checkboxes that are ticked. We then use the COUNTIF function. In parameters, we indicate the range in which we want to count as well as our condition. Here it is true. So as you can see in our example, we have four tick checkbox, just like in a table. I can now drag my formula down. For aesthetic reasons, we'll add another condition so that a number only appears when a habit is present. Now I drag down my formula, and as you can see, there is nothing if there are no habits on the left-hand side of the table. Then we can use the same condition if for the number of habits left to do or to achieve but it is simply the difference between the number of habits completed and the number of goals to be achieved. Let's calculate the progress of each task using the same formula, but this time as a division. We'll then convert the result into a percentage to reflect the true progress of each task. This formula reveals an issue when there's no goal or if the goal is set to zero. In this case, the division cannot be done it is therefore necessary to add another condition with the if error formula. We can now extend the formula further and this problem is now fixed. Now let's try to visualize our progress a little better. For this, we can use the spark line function. This function is not necessarily easy to use since it uses specific properties such as chart type, max, min, or even color but it adds a very good visual aspect to this spreadsheet. The function works well, but we still have an issue when there are no habits on the left side. Additionally, the orange color is a bit too bright, so we can adjust that. And that's it. Let's add some grid lines and background in gray to better visualize this small table. Let's now calculate the general progress of all our tasks with a small calculation on this side, which allows us to calculate the number of completed tasks, the number of remaining tasks, as well as the overall number of goals. This now allows me to calculate the overall progress as well as create a global sparkline for our spreadsheet. And the habit table and its small summary table on the right are now completed. Let's add a few rows to create our charts. The chart area header will be identical to the one we've already developed below, so a simple copy and paste will suffice. We'll also add a row for completed habits, goals, and what's left to do. The formula is exactly the same as for the right part 
to calculate the progress. So it is the count if formula. Perfect, it works. We can extend the formula. Once again, to avoid having a number that appears when the date does not exist, we can use the if function with the empty condition. Good. We can do the same thing with the goals, and this time we use the star condition, which allows us to define if a cell is not empty. Be careful to lock the cells with the dollar signs. Now for the left section, it's exactly the same thing. We use the if function and then a simple subtraction between the completed and goals. And there you go, you have it. We can then define our weekly progress. Let's add some grid lines to all of these to format the table. In order to have a good view of the number of habits completed in relation to the number of goals during the week, we can use the concatenate function, which allows you to put strings of text end to end. We then have a nice and visual element to easily see our progress. Then we can do exactly the same division in order to calculate our progress as a percentage. And finally, for the last row, we can add the spark line to better represent our progress. And there you have it. You just have to copy and paste from week to week. Be careful for the last week since there are only three days. Oops, I realized I forgot to add a little detail in the header right below Habit Tracker. This formula simply mentioned the month that we selected, so in our example, February. Now let's add a bar-shaped sparkline to make our progress even more visible. This time, the first parameter is the seven days of the week, and the graph is a bar chart. Let's simply use again the sparkline formula and don't forget to change some important parameters to match with each week's. Some adjustments are necessary, like adding the maximum, which is our goal in this example, as well as the color. A simple copy and paste of the formula and our sparklines can be added for the following weeks. And then we just have to change the color. In the fifth week, we've encountered an issue where only one sparkline is appearing, but we need three. So we simply need to add intermediate calculations below the table, which will be hidden later. Don't forget to change the colors in the sparklines below for each week to match the colors defined in our headers. And here you go, our overview table is now finished. So as you can see here, we have some white spaces left in which we can add some graphs or charts. First, let's add a chart to the top of our page. So we need to calculate the percentage of progression for each day. Once we've done this for all the days of the month, we can adjust a few parameters to enhance the graph's clarity and add some visual elements. Finally, we'll place the chart in the correct position. A small adjustment is necessary to the formula in order to have the data in the right place. Perfect, little test. It seems like everything works. So we have two spaces remaining at the upper right corner. Let's try to add a donut chart there first with the overall progress. The graph ends up being a bit small, so consider slightly increase the column width. Now, in the remaining space, let's add the top 10 most consistently followed habits. And we need a little bit of formatting. Let's create our table and format it a little bit. So we simply need to sort our habits from the highest percentage to the lowest. We can easily sort our habits using the sort function, which allows us to sort them from largest to smallest or from smallest to largest. Here, some adjustments are necessary since the empty cells interfere. It is necessary to create an intermediate calculation in order to add zeros in the empty cells. As we can see in my example, when the habit called running is ticked, its percentage increases and it goes above the habit called meditation. Next, use the VLOOKUP function to find the correct percentage for each habit. Be sure to lock the table we're referring with dollar signs to ensure the habits and percentages stay accurate. Now, our habits are properly sorted from largest to smallest. Now, we simply have to display them in our visual table. 
We put our numbers back in the right place. We can merge our cells and then use the if function at the same time as the concatenate function. Be careful here, as we can see, despite the fact that these are percentages, the concatenate function converts our percentages into text. So we must add the text function with the percentage format. Now let's hide our intermediate calculations for a cleaner and more beautiful spreadsheet look. And let's add a small addition to the overview table with overall progress. Here it is simply a matter of adjusting the formulas we've already used. And here our spreadsheet is now finished. Simply rename the tab as well as the spreadsheet and everything is done. Thank you for following us. Don't hesitate to like, comment, or subscribe if you like our videos.